Hey there, this is Chris with Niagara Mods, and this is the Reflow Review. Today we're going to be looking at all the changes in Reflow 1.6. Let's begin! First up, let's talk about performance improvements. Reflow will now compress and cache application and configuration files that get served to web browsers. In performance testing, the Reflow application loads 60 to 70% faster when caching is enabled, and configuration data transfer is reduced by up to 95%, dramatically decreasing initial load times when the configuration is cached. For more details, check our web cache documentation. We've done some work to the device lists. First up, filtering by building and searching by device name has been added into the device list UI. We also gave the edit button an icon. An add button has been added next to edit. This will make adding devices to long lists easier than having to scroll to the bottom of the list to access the Add New Devices list item. The Sort Alphabetically button has been given a label and a confirmation dialog will appear before the list is actually sorted. A new bulk action to assign and remove schedules for devices has been added to the Actions menu. This next feature can be a real time saver. New static images have been added to the equipment library for VAVs, AHUs, FCUs, VFDs, MUAs, and WHPs. Let's break out the BBQ ASAP, BYOB. Reflow's built-in equipment types now have default thumbnails set automatically, sourced from equipment library images. Default thumbnails are only set in new configurations. Existing configurations are unaffected. The graphics setting configuration menu has been broken out into sub-menus due to the amount of options now available. Hide input level and status badges is now enabled by default for new configuration. This does not affect existing configuration files. The first big change that we've made to device graphics are that we added a new point card style. The style of cards used in graphics can be set globally and customized for each device using the point card style property. Options include classic, which is uh, the classic reflow style card that you're used to, relatively unchanged. And then we have the new compact style in which uh, points for each group are displayed in a single card, allowing for more points to fit in the same area of the page. We spent a lot of time in the lab on this one. This is point card markers. We can add additional context to points with these point card markers that you can see right here underneath all of these point cards. You can manage these markers globally in the equipment menu by going to graphic settings and then device graphic pages. Markers can add badges, dots, or we can change the point name font color. Markers can be applied to points in the points templates and or while editing a device's points list using the new badge icon next to the featured star icon. It looks like a eye with a circle around it. You can see here that we applied the point card marker to all of our VAVs in the points template, specifically onto the space local set point to turn it green. A new option for displaying status has been added called auto. It is set by default on new configurations. A delta button has been added to history charts and dashboard cards. Toggling it on will display the history changes over time instead of raw values. This option can be turned on automatically from dashboard card configurations and can be applied to any chart that we currently have.
The time period dropdown has been moved below the history title, and the controls in the top right of history charts have had minor design updates. Give it a peek, play around with it, and see what you can make it do. History Sparkline and History Chart Cards now support delta values. This is a great new tool for your dashboard arsenal. This is the Device Summary Card. You can leverage the power of Reflow's equipment type summary views in dashboards with this new card. Both grid and table options are supported, and you can display all devices of a type or select specific ones. As with most of our cards, you can set the width and height of both of these cards so that they fit exactly what your needs are uh, for each individual dashboard. The table view will automatically have pagination at the bottom so that you can have all of your controls in one shot. If you do set this card to auto, we remove the scroll bars and have a maximum limit of what we can show per page. We've added a marquee selection tool into the floor plan editor. Click and drag in empty areas of floor plans to use the marquee selection tool. Holding shift while using the marquee selection will add items to your existing selection, and holding alt on Windows or option on Mac will remove those items from the selection. Inside of the elements pane, Holding shift while selecting elements in the elements pane will now select all elements between an existing selected element and the element that's clicked on. Holding control on Windows or command on Mac will select only elements that have been clicked. Elements can be locked by selecting them in the pane and using the new lock toggle button on the bottom right. On the canvas, locked elements cannot be selected or moved and allow you to click through them. Locked elements are still selectable in the elements pane list. Elements can also be locked and unlocked by using the right-click context menu. Additional macros are available in the macros tab to quickly lock and unlock all layers. Label elements that have reflow device point bindings can use dynamic variables for title and info line properties. Dollar sign device will be replaced with the device's name. Dollar sign room will be replaced with the assigned room on the device, either by slot or by setting the property in the device config. Dollar sign point will be replaced with the point's name. Labels added with auto labels at Canvas Creation or the Add Equipment Labels macro will automatically have title properties set to dollar sign device and automatically have info line number one properties set to dollar sign room. The word label is also no longer appended to the device name in title properties. The width of the accent mark on labels, it's that left border on the side there, can now be set in the Layout Options tab. This is disabled on mobile by default, but it can be enabled by unchecking the desktop slash tablet only option under the Accent Width text box. The alarms architecture has been significantly upgraded to support larger alarm databases and leverage station-side processing for alarm records. Alarm consoles now have an unlimited record count. The alarm limit property has been removed from the reflow service as it is no longer necessary to limit the amount of records returned by the service as records are now paged server-side. Each alarm console now remembers the last time period set when returning to the view after navigating away. This is saved per session and will be cleared on logout or when the web browser is closed.
The alarm's toolbar has had minor design updates, including being contained by a border. Alarm sources and alarm details tables can be exported as CSV files with a new export option. Alarm extension hyperlinks now load in the toolbar instead of under the title when enabled. This update into our user profile section is going to make your life a whole lot easier if you have a lot of users and a lot of content in a multi-building situation. New buttons have been added to allow or restrict all content in the Access Settings UI. A new option in each profile allows new content created in Reflow to be restricted by default. This ensures that profiles retain their existing access settings when new content is created. When selecting multiple orgs, including during adding devices and editing user profiles, you can now hold Shift to select multiple items in one click. You can also double-click a parent item to select all of its children. A new status indicator dot can be found at the top right of the Reflow config view. It displays the current communication status and number of users actively connected. Let's talk a little bit about single user configuration mode. In this example, we've got a web browser on the left and a separate web browser on the right. This is going to emulate two different users for the purposes of this video. As the basic user on the right is navigating around, we can see inside of the Who's Online panel on the left where that user is and what they're looking at. Reflow Config View will prevent multiple sessions from editing the configuration at the same time. Sessions could be different users or the same user in a different browser tab. This safeguard has been put into place to prevent issues where users overwrite each other's configurations without knowing it. If the Reflow Config View is open while another session is active, they will be prompted with a lobby screen where they can request control from the controlling session. If the controlling user does not respond within 30 seconds to deny their request, control will be given to the requester. And let's dive into a feature that has been requested for a long time now. This is multi-user mode. Now to note, this is still experimental. We're rolling this feature out slowly and want to hear your feedback on quality and performance. During the 1.6 cycle, this mode will be disabled by default, but we encourage you to try it out in safe environments and let us know what you think. Multi-user mode can be turned on by setting the multi-user config property of the Reflow service to enabled. Multiple users can simultaneously make changes to the configuration when this mode is enabled. Delta changes from each session are synchronized with the Reflow service and broadcast to other connected sessions. In addition to the station file system, multi-user mode stores configuration data in memory. This will cause Reflow to use more station resources versus single user mode. While multi-user mode allows for simultaneous editing, it is not recommended to edit the same item that another user is working on, particularly editing the same floor plan. A warning will be shown in the floor plan editor if another user is editing it as well. You can also see if users are editing the same thing as you by clicking on the communication status indicator to open a list of users that are online and their location in Reflow. Well, that about wraps things up with our review of Reflow 1.6. We've got more great Reflow videos on our YouTube, and we've also got our updates and news on our LinkedIn and Twitter profiles. What's the next feature we should look at in our next video? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much.